In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us call to mind our sin, brethren, and prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my, thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what, what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on earth, peace to people, people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless, bless you, we adore you, we, adore you, we glorify you. We give, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. Is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. to 
chance or oblation you wished not but ears open to obedience you gave me burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not then said i behold i come here i am is my delight and your law is within my heart here i am lord here i am lord i come to do your will i announced your justice in the vast assembly did not restrain my lips as you oh lord know here i am lord here i am lord i come to do your will your justice i kept not hid within my heart your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of, I have made no secret of your kindness and your truth in the vast assembly. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desire nor delight in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. 
Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have to admit that there is always a certain amount of joy that I experience any time I have the opportunity to celebrate a feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I don't know whether it's because I was steeped in the faith and in the love of Mary from the time I was very young, or I don't know when exactly it was that I appropriated it for myself, but in our family, we always prayed to Mary. My father and mother both had a very great devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. As a matter of fact, my father bought this vestment for me when I was first ordained. Father Declan also has a devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and has his own vestment dedicated to her as well. And we have such a devotion to Mary because she has a very special place in salvation history. Now, one of the things that often sets us apart from other Christians is our devotion to Mary. And the reason it sets us apart is because people on the outside of the church who do not understand the church say that we worship and adore Mary. We don't do that. What we do is hold a very special place in our hearts and even in our liturgies because of the example of Mary. Mary, after all, is the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. But Mary was just as human as you and I. This mystery we celebrate today is one that, that speaks dearly to me because it reminds me of what the heart of a Christian should be. Mary was a young teen, and she, as all of her people, would have been praying continuously for the deliverance of God's people. They would have been praying day in and day out, year in and year out, decade in and decades out, generations in and generations out, constantly praying for the fulfillment of a promise that one day God would send a Savior. Mary, raised in her faith, prayed fervently for the fulfillment of the promise, never knowing that she was going to be invited to take a special role in it. And one night at prayer, an angel appeared to her. And what was her response? It would have been the same response of any of us if an angel ever popped in front of our eyes. We'd be scared. And we know that she had been frightened because the very first words out of the angel's mouth were, fear not, Mary, fear not. This is a good meeting. 
don't worry. And then he told her the marvelous news. God chose you to be the mother of his son, and he needs you to respond. Mary was fearful, but she accepted the angel's invitation not to fear. And her response was remarkable, if not heroic. She basically told the angel, I have no idea what's going on. I don't understand how this could come about. But I know one thing about myself. I know that I'm the handmaid of the Lord. And if God is asking me to do something, then by golly, I'm going to say yes. So fiat, let it be done. Let it be done to me according to God's word. Those are the hallmarks of any Christian. First, to reject the shackle of fear. And second, to joyfully, humbly, willingly embrace God's call. As I reflect upon that for my own life, I think to myself about the numbers of opportunities that I could have become very fearful, filled with anxiety, all the different assignments that I was asked to take, whether they be in inner city parishes, whether they be at rural places, whether they be at orphanages, whether they be running summer camps, whether they be ministering to um, the prisons in Michigan City, whatever it was, I knew two things, fear not, and embrace God's will. And if we do so, God will never let us down. Many people today are living in fear because of the spread of the coronavirus. Today's solemnity, if nothing else, reminds us who call ourselves believers to reject the shackle of fear and to embrace whatever it is God might have in store for us. Let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the fathers before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We ask God our Father to hear our Lenten prayer and to give us the grace that we need to embrace his holy will. For the leaders of the church, may the Lord richly bless them in their ministry and protect them from all evil that surrounds them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national leaders, may God grant them compassion and insight in acting for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all those who care for them, may God grant them healing, relief, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may the Holy Spirit continue to empower us in saying yes to what God asks of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, 
may they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom by Mary and the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Tindara Merlo, Margaret Webb, and all the living and deceased of our parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of this holy church. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering, so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men and for men's sake by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb that the promise of the children of Israel might come about and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao, Pleni Suceli et Terra, Gloria Tua, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O God, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas More and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace to you. On your stay, we told this peccatamundi. On your stay, we told it 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that professing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.